Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing schizophrenia and the antipsychotic drugs. Okay, right, so we've now discussed the antipsychotic drugs, which we know are all D2 receptor antagonists. They work by binding, at least this is the best understanding we have of how they work, uh, they work by binding to D2 receptors in the nucleus accumbens and stopping dopamine from being able to bind to and activate those D2 receptors on the neurons in the nucleus accumbens. Okay, and we believe that potentially this then stops the aberrant salience that is occurring in schizophrenia. Okay, and then stop that's how it stops the delusions and it stops the hallucinations. Okay, and once again, I will stress this point again these drugs are fantastic at getting rid of the psychology symptoms, but they do not get rid of the negative and cognitive symptoms. Although people sometimes claim that the atypical antipsychotics, through their actions on many other receptors, do have cognitive and uh, other benefits on the um, negative symptoms as well. Okay, right. Now, what we're going to turn our attention to is the extrapyramidal side effects, okay, that all antipsychotic drugs have, okay, but the atypical antipsychotics have them to a lesser extent, and I'm going to explain why that is, okay? So, firstly, we need to know something about the extrapyramidal motor system. Okay, now, the thing that we need to know about is that for normal function of the extrapyramidal motor system, you need a functional nigrostriatal pathway. Okay, now this is a pathway from the substantia nigra to the striatum. Now, I don't think I actually ever told you what the striatum was. So, back over to this picture here. Okay, so the striatum, okay, also sometimes called the corpus striatum is the name for the putamen plus the chordate here plus the nucleus accumbens. Okay, those are the main three portions of the striatum anyway. Okay, there are a few more niche areas, but I'm not going to go into those. Okay, for our purposes, the por portions that are going to be important in the extrapyramidal motor system are the chordate nucleus and the putamen. Okay, and often these two collectively together are called the chordate putamen. Okay, this is the portion that's going to be involved in this extrapyramidal motor system. Okay, now, basically, if we go back to this picture here, let's draw on the substantia nigras. Okay, here they are. Here's one of them anyway. Okay, and I might do it so it actually shows up in black like that. Okay, and here's another substantia nigra here. Basically, these also contain dopaminergic neurons, okay? And these dopaminergic neurons are going to be also sending their axons into the medial forebrain bundle, okay? And the axons that are going into the medial forebrain bundle from these substantia nigras are going to leave the medial forebrain bundle and then go to the chordate putamen. Now, I acknowledge that we have not got the chordate shown on this diagram, but we do at least have the putamen. So I'm showing them going to the putamen. The chordate, do I dare show this? I suppose we don't really need this picture anymore, so I might try showing the chordate. So here, let's show the chordate on this side here. Okay, so there is the chordate. I'm now trying to show it wrapping around. It's difficult to show it because we're looking from the above. Okay, and really to see it wrapping around, you need to be looking from the side, like so. Okay, to show it on this side as well, here it is going round like so. Okay, there we go. Okay, so these fibres, these dopaminergic fibres, are coming out of the medial forebrain bundle into the chordate putamen, and they're releasing dopamine into the chordate putamen. Okay, now what does the dopamine act on in the chordate putamen? Well, it acts on D2 receptors. So, this pathway from the substantia nigras to the chordate and the putamen of the striatum is called the nigrostriatal pathway. So, remember, the pathway from the ventral tegmental area to the cortex was the mesocortical pathway. The pathway from the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus accumbens was the mesolimbic pathway. The pathway from the substantia nigra to the chordate putamen, or the main portions of the striatum is then called the nigrostriatal 
striatal pathway. Okay, now, the nigrostriatal pathway is releasing dopamine into the caudate putamen, and I think I'll put a few little steps in here. So we're releasing dopamine into the caudate putamen, and that dopamine is now acting on D2 receptors. Okay, and this pathway is needed for uh, the extrapyramidal motor system to function properly. So, if you start giving someone a drug that is going to block D2 receptors, you're going to turn this pathway off, okay? And that's going to cause motor side effects, okay? Now, interestingly, Parkinson's disease is caused by, well, <laughs> Parkinson's disease, the cause is very, very complicated. Okay, and I'm going to make a separate video on that, okay? But the thing that causes the motor um, manifestations of Parkinson's disease is that the substantia nigra neurons die in Parkinson's disease. So this is not what's going to happen by giving antipsychotic drugs, but in Parkinson's disease, the substantia nigra dopamine neurons die, okay? So this is in Parkinson's disease, PD. I'll write it out in full. Parkinson's disease. Okay, and this causes the motor problems that are seen in Parkinson's disease. We are effectively doing the same thing as happens in Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease is a huge, great neurodegenerative disease in which neurons are dying all over the brain, uh, but the first ones that you specifically notice um, as dying, okay, because they cause such a problem once they've died, is the substantia nigra, okay? Uh, but and by cutting off the substantia nigra, uh, or by cutting off the D2 receptors, you do the same thing pretty much as what would happen if you cut off the substantia nigra, okay? And you're going to have very similar side effects as occur in Parkinson's disease. So what are these side effects? Well, when you first take the antipsychotic drugs, firstly, you get something known as acute dystonias. Okay, so let me explain what this means. So acute means that they occur very quickly once you start taking the antipsychotic drugs. So generally they'll occur within weeks of starting to take the antipsychotic drugs. Okay, now what does dystonia mean? It means problems with muscle tone. Okay, so this means problems with how much stimulation you are sending to your muscles. Okay, so let me explain this. All of your muscles are getting chronic stimulation from neurons, okay? It's not the case that your muscles are, or are completely not getting any uh, stimulation from the nervous system at any point. Continuously, the nervous system is stimulating all muscles, okay? And this is known as muscle tone, okay? So your muscles remain a little bit contracted, and that's called muscle tone, muscle tone, rather. Okay, in an acute dystonia, what's going to happen is you're going to get problems with muscle tone. You're going to change the amount that you are stimulating your muscles, and it's going to cause problems with maintaining a normal posture. Okay, so basically, people who have got um, acute dystonia, generally what they have, uh, what they will present with is they will have a protruding tongue, so generally they end up with their tongue protruding from their mouth. Okay, and this is involuntary, they can't control this, okay? They end up with something known as torticulus, okay? Which means a slanted head, okay? So their head posture isn't normal. So let me show this. Um, so we'll have the head will be on a sort of slant like so, and then we'll have the tongue sort of protruding like so. So the tongue is out, okay? And also they'll generally have a fixed upward gaze, okay, so they can't move their eyes either, so fixed upward gaze, okay, so let me show this, so the eyes will be staring up into space here, okay, so that's generally what an acute dystonia presents as. The other things that you will suffer with are muscle spasms, okay, so muscle spasms are uncontrollable sudden contractions of muscles, okay, so occasionally the problem with muscle tone will result in uh, a muscle contracting involuntary, basically. Okay, so, uh, those are the symptoms of acute dystonia. Now, the nice thing about acute dystonia, at least compared to what we're about to discuss, is that if you stop taking the drugs, 
then they will go away. Okay, so it's not permanent, basically. Contrast that now to the second um, thing that happens if you take antipsychotic drugs for a very long time, okay, which is tardive dyskinesia. Okay, so if you take antipsychotic drugs for months or years, you generally end up developing a tardive dyskinesia. Okay, and unfortunately, even if you stop taking the antipsychotic drugs, generally these don't go away. Okay, so what happens in a tardive dyskinesia is that you get involuntary movements. Okay, and generally these are very rapid movements. Okay, so involuntary movements, and they're generally of the face, okay, and specifically of the tongue. Okay, so generally they'll be moving their tongue just continuously. Okay, and moving their face around also. And um, those are the two common places where you get the movements in tardive dyskinesia. Okay, but you can also get them in the trunk and limbs. Okay, so flailing movements of the limbs. Okay, so clearly this is hugely debilitating. Okay, um, so th the horrible thing, as I say, about tardive dyskinesia is it doesn't generally go away even once you remove the antipsychotic drug it seems to be permanent okay and it really is quite intractable to treatment